Once again, federal regulators seizing another bank, First Republic Bank becoming the second largest bank in the country to fail. So what's leading to these bank failures? Is this the last of it? Let's bring in my guest tonight, financial expert and entrepreneur Ryan Stuman, up late with me tonight here on The Final Five. Hey, Ryan, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me, Jim. Uh, look, first things first, we, we, we saw this play out last month. Uh, we had Silicon Valley Bank and some of these other banks that maybe most people haven't heard of. First Republic's a pretty big one, though. And, and when you know people who have money in these banks, if, if you're concerned about it, what goes through your mind when you see these things play out in the media? Well, you know, we've seen these things happen with crypto, places like Coinbase and Voyager that have had problems and held everybody's assets. And I think that has a lot of people on edge as well. But as far as the banks, I mean, the good news is the government says they're going to take care of everybody and bail them out. But it, but in what time frame? It's not like they came out and said everybody's money will be available tomorrow. Uh, one time a major bank canceled one of our business accounts and mailed us a check, and it took like 45 days before we had access to our money. So there's no telling how that could play out. You know, especially too, and and you mentioned that with crypto, and and you have this this banking this banking industry, this financial industry, where uh, you have innovation like cryptocurrency that has come along uh, that that people are still learning about. Obviously, the federal government has has been through this before with with banking, with savings and loans through the years. When we've seen failures out there, they come in, they find another bank. Like in this case, Chase is going to take over First Republic, and they're promising that everybody is going to be made whole. They're not going to lose anything along the way. But we have regulations, we have laws in this country that really haven't evolved with the with the innovation and with the technology. Yeah, I agree. Uh, you know, there's been a lot of uh, high-end real estate investors that are wanting title companies to put the titles to properties on the blockchain and stuff like that. But, you know, the other big problem is, you know, a lot of people are scared thinking these bank failures are around necessary are, are just around their deposits and money. It doesn't, the bank doesn't ever spend our money, right? They leverage our money and then to usually to the tune of 10 times the leverage and go out and make loans. And really, the problem that the banks are having, like Old Republic, is the loans are, you know, the interest rates are three times as high as they were just a year and a half ago, uh, which means that you owe debt at a higher rate than maybe when you originally sell, uh, originally sold that debt. Second most, the, the big wave of this hasn't even hit yet, Jim, because what's going to happen is, you know, typically when a home buyer gets approved for a home, they say, how much home can I buy? They don't come in. I, I was in mortgages for 10 years. Rarely did somebody come in with a budget. They always want the bank to set their budget. How much do you think I can afford? I'll go shop for that. So what we're seeing right now, the big problem, with, especially with the new laws that are being put in place that, that Biden just signed off on and Congress thought was a good idea to you know, penalize. And, I, and it's not even really penalized, but we'll just call it that, penalize people with good credit in order to pay for people with marginal credit, right? And that's kind of been going on forever. But what happens is, let's say in the last six 60 days, a bunch of people were shopping for homes that were about to be finished with builders or they were about to get a loan on it and close. And now all of a sudden they've implemented these new changes to where if you have a 740 credit score, the bank may have qualified me for a half a million dollar house. Now I've got a point and a half adjustment inside the yeah. lending profile for having good credit, which now I can't qualify for that house anymore. So think of that affecting the sellers, the buyers, the realtors, and the trickle down effect of everybody's money and home ownership being involved there too. So like I said, the, the next wave of this stuff hasn't even come at us yet. You know, and especially because we, we talked about that a little bit last week with the Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, uh, the, these changes were, again, as you mentioned, people with higher credit scores might get dinged a little bit more uh, in terms of processing fees along the way. And and you bring it full circle because when you look at these banks that have failed and, and you know, you bring in a, a, these other banks like Chase, understandable why you do this out there because you don't want a bunch of people to be, for lack of a better word, screwed in long term. But this is why a lot of people look at a system and when you play by the rules as an everyday, whether you're an investor, whether you're a home buyer, whether you're just an everyday saver, you see other mistakes being made on much larger scales and they're eventually made whole anyway. Yeah, you, you know, for those of us that do the right thing, and I haven't always done the right thing, but for those of us that are trying to do the right thing, it sure seems like there's a lot of reward for not doing it lately. You know, it seems yeah. like, you know, uh, the people that do the right things never get the bailout. The people that don't make mistakes never get the government help. You know, it wasn't 
us shareholders or us depositors that lost the the loans or didn't make the right loans or didn't underwrite things and but we don't get any kind of help matter of fact it could hurt somebody we're talking about the first of may if republic bank isn't made whole in the next few days how many people are going to miss their rent their mortgage their car payment something of that nature you know uh before i let you go uh the head of chase jamie diamond had said something to the effect because chase is the biggest bank in the country, they're going to get even bigger through this. And they say, he said something to the effect of, if you don't believe we need big banks, I want to talk to you. And I, I, per, I perceive that as he wants to talk to the likes of Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren who say, we got to break up these big banks along the way. Um, do you think people should be worried uh, right now? I mean, what, what's the best way you prepare for what could happen down the road? I, I I don't think you need to be worried about your money. I mean, after all, America loves printing this stuff. So worst case scenario, our government, I'm sure, would just print more to bail people out. That seems to be what they always do anyway. Um, and I'm not sure how I feel about a big bank or not. I personally do business with a small regional bank uh, or a medium-sized regional bank versus uh, someone like Chase or Bank of America. But at the same time, it's like, how big do they get until they say, oh, we've created our own currency now, whether it be crypto or central banking. We've talked about that for a while. And the United States has, has talked about that a lot lately, too, of maybe putting out their own crypto and stuff. But if you're the biggest bank and then all of a sudden you're in charge of that, it seems like a lot of power and a lot of responsibility and people that have been traditionally irresponsible hands, you know? Yeah. Ryan Stuman, hey, thanks for joining us tonight. We appreciate it. Absolutely. Thanks for having me on, Jim. And the Final Five is back after this.